The rules for achieving financial independence are simple. The rules are as follows. Rule number one is, spend less than you earn. Five words. And then, save or invest the difference. This has always been the case. This is the key to financial success. Going back to the richest man in Babylon by Clayson more than 2,000 years ago. You can be a blithering idiot at an average job, working at a gas station or on a farm, or driving a truck at an average wage. But if you save $100 a month on average from age 20 to age 65 and let it accumulate, you'll be worth more than a million dollars. $100 a month, $25 a week, or less than $4 a day. How about the same amount as buying a latte coffee at Starbucks? Can you do that? Okay, well, do lots of other things, but do that for sure. Now, rule number two, for achieving financial independence is that 10% of every dollar you earn is yours to keep. What this means is that you need to develop a habit from the beginning of your career and throughout of cutting 10% off the top of your salary and living on the other 90%. Most people get their paycheck and they spend most of it. If there's anything left over, they throw it in the bank temporarily and then they grab it out and spend it on something else. They look at their bank account and shout, Gee, we've got money here. Let's burn it. Some people have just got to get rid of the money. Rule number three is to resolve in advance to prefer financial independence to status. The work in the millionaire next door found that the mark of self-made millionaires is that they weren't concerned about impressing the neighbors or keeping up with the Joneses. They were more concerned with financial independence than by looking good on the outside, at least until they became wealthy. So say to yourself, financial independence is number one to me, and status is number one to me, and status is number two or three or four or ten. Then be willing to stick to it. It's absolutely amazing what will happen to you financially. Do you know what we found out about self-made millionaires? They never buy new cars. Why? Why? Because in a new car, there's several thousand dollars of depreciation. It's money that you lose the minute you drive it off the lot. So what self-made millionaires do, based on interviews with thousands of them, is they pick a car they really like. They follow it in Consumer Reports and J-Power for quality and service. And then about two to three years out, they look for used models with low mileage and good service records. And then they buy a car that 20 to 25 percent in depreciation has already been taken out of. I've worked with a man once who started with nothing and achieved a net worth of $800 million. Now he lived in a nice, normal neighborhood, you know, with doctors and lawyers and architects, but not ostentatious. But not ostentatious. But the people living on either side of him were just two paychecks away from homelessness. If their income was cut off for two months, they wouldn't be able to make their mortgage payments. I watched this guy. He drove the same used car for three or four years. He liked Cadillacs. He'd get a nice Cadillac, take good care of it, then he'd get another used or loaner vehicle from a dealership, so that it had already been depreciated. He was never ostentatious at all. And he ended up one of the richest men in America. When you met him, he'd be wearing an old sweater. He didn't have a huge wardrobe or the same suits to meetings, and he had no bills at all. But when he wanted to go somewhere, he'd fly in his private $25 million jet all by himself. Now, back to the last rule for achieving financial independence. Rule number four is once you put the money away, never touch it. Now, this is important. So if you're writing it down, write it in red. You see, many of us make the mistake of thinking that if you save money, you put that money away so you can have it. It's fun money. So when you decide, I want to buy a car, or I want to go on a trip. I want a boat, I want to go on a trip. I want a boat, I want a motor home. You go and you get this money that you saved. However, if you want to spend money on those things, set up a separate savings account. This money is for your financial security. This is your financial freedom fund. Once you put money into this financial freedom account, you lock it in like a one-way door. It goes in and it never comes out. You never comes out. You never spend it. I can tell you all kinds of stories about how this will change your life, including in my life. But please believe me. Once you put it away and decide that you will never spend it as far as you're concerned, it's gone forever. I personally will do whatever is necessary, no matter what my financial emergency is, to not touch my financial fortress. Never touch it, because if you even think, even a tiny glimmer that you can get it if you need it, then you'll find yourself needing it at the first opportunity. So the key to financial success is, pay yourself first.
Save 10 of your account, buy used things rather than new, and once you put money away, never, never touch it. Put it away and let it stay there until it accumulates and enables you to do anything you want in life. Today, in America, it's a little different because of the state of the economy and, of course, you bought low and sold high. But very few of us did that. Uh, 10 to 20 percent per year after taxes and expenses in terms of growing your net worth is a pretty good goal. And it's ultimately achievable. So write down five figures representing your target net worth over the next five years. It seems remarkable, but the fact is that the starting point of increasing your income or your net worth is very simple. Can you guess what it is? Decide to do it. Make a decision to become financially independent. You say, well, it's not that simple. Well, it is that simple. It's just not easy. But it is simple. The primary reason that people don't succeed in life or finances is because they never decide to and then back up that decision with determination. Now, there are a lot of things you can do after you've made a decision. There are very few things you can do before making a decision or without making a decision or without making a decision. So make that decision. Your decision may be wrong or it may be inaccurate, but at least it's a great starting point. It's like drawing a line in the ground that you step over. But what if I don't get it by such and such a date? Don't worry about it. At least get it on paper and take the first step. Once upon a time when I started my career, I sat down at the end of the year and my tax returns were $14,400. Twelve years later, I sat down and did my tax returns and my tax returns were $1,440,000. I would increased my income by a hundred times in twelve years. And I went back and I started to look at that and I realized that I used a formula which I gradually articulated into what I call the thousand percent formula. And it's very simple. It's based on the law of uh, incremental improvement. Japanese call it the Kaizen principle, the principle of continuous betterment. It's getting a little bit better every day. So I asked the question, if you could increase your productivity, performance and output by one tenth of one percent per day, could you do that? Could you increase your productivity, performance, and output by one one thousandth a day? And the answer is, of course. If you're even the tiniest bit more efficient or you worked a little bit harder on a more important task, you could become a tenth of a percent better in a day. Well, if you did that every single day for a week, you would be one tenth of one percent times five. You'd be one half of one percent more productive in a week. Is that possible? Of course you would say anybody can become that small amount more productive. So I said, if you did that every week for four weeks, you'd be 2% more productive over the course of a month. If you did that every day for 13, four week months in a year, 52 weeks, you would be 26% more productive. Is that possible? And the answer is yes, because there is a thing at success called the momentum principle. That means that once you start going, it becomes easier and easier to keep going and to go faster and faster. So once you become 26% more productive in the course of a year, your overall output, your results, your income will go up by 26%. What happens is you start to get into the swing of it. You start to be more effective, more efficient. You get more things done. You start earlier, you work harder, you stay later, you set better priorities, and so on. So if you do this 26% each year for 10 years, you will be 10.04% better. And this is what happened to me, and it's happened to every single person I've ever worked with. Not long ago, I was in Seattle, and this young man came up to me. He's about 30. I met him when he was about 22. He was working in a used car lot in a small town outside of Portland. His name is Chris, and he came up and said, Mr. Tracy, do you remember me? I said, yes, Chris. Of course. Nice guy. Great personality. He said, well, you know the thousand percent formula that you taught to me many years ago? I said, yes, I remember because I've taught it to so many people. He said, Brian, it doesn't work. I said, it doesn't work. He said, it doesn't work. I said, how do you mean? He smiled and said, it doesn't take 10 years. It only took me seven. 
He said, today he's earning ten times what he was earning. Seven he is earning seven years ago. He said, I used it every day. It's absolutely amazing. I am making more money today in a week or a month than I was often making in a month or a year by using that formula. What I did personally is I used it once, increased my income ten times, and then I used it again and increased my income ten times more. A hundred times in twelve years. And so can you. There are two great principles of wealth attainment, and they're both equally important to understand and implement in order to be successful and acquire wealth. The first principle of wealth creation is make compound interest work in your favor. Einstein said that compound interest is the most powerful force in the universe. Get that money in there and get it working for you. Interested Peter Lynch of Magellan said that it's not timing the market that makes you rich. It's time in the market that makes you rich. Remember, if you invested one dollar at three percent at the time of Christ, you'd be worth all the money in the world today with compound interest. Compound interest is phenomenal, so make it work in your favor by getting the money in there early and leaving it there to work. The second principle of wealth creation is to use dollar cost averaging. When you buy stocks, don't worry about being right every time or getting the lowest price when you buy. It doesn't really matter unless, of course, stocks are overpriced at the end of a boom. But if you invest a steady amount of money every week or every month or every week year, then you'll end up buying things at the average price. The prices will go up and down, but you'll end up buying them high, buying them low, buying them average, and over time you'll get the very best average deal. Dollar cost averaging is one of the great techniques for financial success. Now, here's an example of dollar cost average investing. Steady, 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 year after year. I have a good friend who came over here as an immigrant at the age of 17. Couldn't even speak English. So, he began to learn English. And when he was 20 years old, he could speak enough English to begin studying financial success and going to college. Well, I had dinner with him not long ago. He had a four-acre property and a 16,000-square-foot home in a beautiful community on the East Coast. He's worth millions of dollars today. He owns banks and shopping centers and national corporations. Here's what happened. When he was 20, someone told him that real estate is the key to financial success. They're not making any more of it. You should own real estate. Well, he never thought about that, and at that time he was a student and didn't have very much money. But he was working evenings and weekends to pay for his needs. Which is what they used to do in those days. So, he decided he would buy one piece of property each year. His first piece of property was in a small community outside of town. And it was a lot. And it cost $25 a month to service it. He had to sweat. It's to make those monthly payments. But his goal was to buy one piece of property a year. And he kept on doing it. He's now 49 years old. And the last piece of property he bought last year was a $225 million shopping center. He still buys one property a year, only now they're much, much bigger. The skill and experience and discipline that he developed over time in buying those properties, which got bigger and bigger, made him a millionaire and then a multimillionaire. So what's your excuse? What's our excuse? We're surrounded by hundreds, thousands, even millions of these stories. What is our excuse? It's always one thing. What is it? It's lack of discipline. So remember the two great principles of wealth creation. Making compound interest work for you by getting the money in there and working and using dollar cost averaging, whether it's buying stocks or real estate. Next is maximize. Determine your special talents, abilities, and strengths and focus on developing them to a higher level. Then. Multiply is to leverage yourself and your business with other people's customers, other people's knowledge, other people's abilities, other people's efforts, other people's efforts, other people's money, and other people's resources. Now, you've heard the old saying, it takes money to make money. Yes, that's true, but it doesn't have to be your money. It could be somebody else's money. All successful people have developed the ability to call on the money of others. Why? It's because they do good work, and they do good planning, and they take good care of their money. And people line up to give them money. There's now trillions of dollars of money waiting. 
I have a good friend, one of my business partners, mostly a multi-millionaire, started with nothing and he's worth tens of millions of dollars. He's sitting on a pool of money that he keeps at very low levels of interest. He said, I can't find a place to put it and I will not put it until I find a place. If somebody could come along with any kind of a business proposition where the person has credibility and a track record and has a good business proposition, there's more money available than you can dream of. The money is there in torrents, like tsunamis of money that are available. That's why you're reading the paper. You read that such, and such company just paid one. Eight billion dollars or two. Six or nine. Nine or Google just offered Groupon six billion dollars cash for their business. There's lots of money for good business ideas, but it doesn't have to be your money. It can be somebody else's money, and your ability to attract that money and to justify it is really important. Strategic planning is an essential part of the success formula. Your ability to create a clear and organized strategic plan will largely contribute to your success and wealth. In fact, it's virtually impossible to succeed greatly unless you have a clear idea of where you're going and how to get there. So, here are three key factors to remember when devising a strategic plan. Number one, you are in business for yourself. This means that everything that is ever going to happen to your personal success, corporation, your personal business is up to you. No one else can be expected to do it for you. Now, here is a perverse law. The more that you accept that you are responsible for doing whatever it is, the more others will line up to help you. So therefore you say these words, if it's to be, it's up to me. Number two. Your aim in strategic planning is to increase your return on energy. Why call this row return on energy? The purpose of strategic planning in business is to increase return on equity. Rub. Return capital working in the organization. But your capital is mental, emotional, and human. Your job is to get the most out of your mental, emotional, and intellectual capital. Your job is to get the highest return on energy. My friend Ken Blanchard says, you want to get the highest return on the amount of your life invested in your work. Number three. Successful individuals also have good personal strategic plans because a good strategic plan assures that you will get the highest return on the amount of energy that you invest in anything you do.